The key to learning just about any skill is to first learn how to learn. Now, the technique I've developed for myself is to break everything down into teeny tiny little steps. And the good news is I only need to know what the first one is because after I've done it, I evaluate and then decide on a second and then a third and so on until eventually they all add up to the skill I've been trying to conquer. Let me explain by telling a little story. My name is Cornelius Quiring. That's my logo, Editing Corn. Take us back to the story. In my crash course on sewing machines video, there's a section where I describe how to adjust the timing of the sewing machine if stitches are skipping. Specifically, I showed how to adjust the belt underneath this machine. But what I really wanted to do was show adjusting the gears inside this one. Quick recap on how sewing machines work. As the needle from the top goes down into the bottom, there's this circular rocking bit underneath, which has this little hook on it that grabs the thread from the top needle, pulls it around, down, and loops around the thread that's at the bottom. This is what joins the thread around the fabric, and the needle goes back up, and the process repeats itself. And now if the timing of this isn't absolutely perfect, this is how you get skip stitches. Back to where we left off. I had opened it underneath, undid a couple of the screws on the gears, jiggled it all around, or tried to, but nothing seemed to move. So I just figured, I guess this is a skip proof machine, tightened everything back up again and closed it and moved on. Much to my surprise, the next time I found myself zigzag stitching, oh yeah, yeah, no, the timing could be messed up. But uh, <laughs> I was a bit miffed by this, so opened it up again, jiggled some more, and that didn't solve it, so I closed it up and put it away and procrastinated for a few months before I finally decided to tackle it. So cue my many teeny tiny little steps technique. Step one was to take it all apart. Undo the screws, take off whatever needed to be taken off so that I could get the gears off so I could observe the various parts that make up the functionality in that area. Taking it apart ended up being a whole series of its own steps. It was at this point that I discovered my original error. I had indeed jiggled the gear enough for it to be off a little bit. See this bar that runs across here, it has a flat spot where the screw that goes through the gear is supposed to sit flush so that it will be nice and tight and there's no room for movement. And I had moved it enough so that the screw was going part of the round bit. Hence why my timing was off. Now I just needed to put it together. I didn't expect it to work, but I just wanted to understand how all the parts are reassembled. And in the process of doing this, I realized just how tight everything is within the little area there. And so I had to take off the plate at the top just so I could reach in from the other side to hold everything in place and slide the components together. There's an example of a bonus step I could never have anticipated until eventually I got everything slotted back together. That took at least a couple hours. Let's go ahead and add a handful of steps to our running tally. I did a few ginger little twists of the wheel and clunk. Yeah, yeah, no, it, <laughs> it definitely wasn't working. It was decently close, but not anywhere near enough. So I just twisted the wheel back and forth looking to see what happened. And that's when I realized on the far end of the long thin bar, that is the connection point that goes up and across and back down to the needle at the top. And that bar is just completely smooth all the way around, which means if I loosen it there, 
I can spin the top, the needle up and down without actually moving the gears underneath. And that is in fact the area where the timing is adjusted. So I loosened it up a little bit, spun the top to a new position, tightened it up, another clunk. It's actually <laughs> a bit worse. So I undid it and I went in the opposite direction, which, what are you looking at? It got me a little bit closer. And so from here, I just kept dialing in a little bit more, seeing what would happen. And I got to the point where only one or two zigzag stitches would skip, but I was not happy with that. I want perfect zigzag stitches all the time. It was at that point that I remembered at the very beginning, the first time around when I'd opened it up and tried fiddling around, I had observed that there was just a tiny little gap. And essentially what that does is it pushes the hook just ever so little bit closer to the needle. And that was just enough to make sure that it caught the thread every single time. So I'm happy to say I have figured out how to adjust the timing on this machine. I had no clue what the path was going to look like trying to fix this machine. But what I did do was trust that each step of the way I was going to learn a little bit more until eventually I had solved the problem. Now, what the specifics of how you like to learn to learn is going to look like is for you to figure out. But learn how to learn and you'll be able to learn just about anything. Here's a whole bunch of links that you can check out to learn a little bit more about what I do and support my efforts. Thank you to everyone who does support me on Patreon. A special shout out to all these wonderful folks for being top tier supporters. Greatly appreciated. Let me know down in the comments how you've learned to learn or what you think of my technique. Thanks for watching.